everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial. However, today is not just any old miniature painting tutorial. No, today we are looking at how to paint black armor. Yes, we have two contrast colors here, Black Templar and Black Legion. And a number of you have asked me, which do I prefer? Is it Black Legion or is it Black Templar? Well, I like them both. They both do completely different things. So I thought I would do a video where we will paint 10 different black armor recipes using these two as our kind of main black colors, including highlights and things like that. And we would use the push fit chaos warriors from start collecting slaves to darkness to do this. So are you excited? I'm excited. <laughs> what we're gonna do first though, is we're going to compare the two colors on their own by painting them on two of these guys so you can see what they look like and then you can make your mind up from there and then we're going to go through all of the black templar ones and then all of the black legion ones that's what i think we're going to do that seems like a good plan Okay, so first up we have Black Templar. We're just gonna be applying this on its own using a medium layer brush. So you can see what it looks like when it is just Black Templar straight out the pot. As you can see, as I'm applying it, it kind of looks black, but it's actually really kind of dark gray. And as soon as you start to kind of run out of contrast paint on the brush, it gets grayer and grayer and it starts to dry by kind of moving this contrast paint does, moving its paint into the recesses. And as that starts to happen, your flat panels start to look a little bit gray. It's not a displeasing color by any means. I really like it. I think it looks really cool. However, as many of you War Hipster fans well, no, we've often done Black Templar over the top of another color, which we will get to later. One of the reasons we do that is because it's so transparent that it actually needs something underneath it for it to be truly black, for it to really make its kind of black properties shine. As you can see, it's kind of closer to something like Dark Reaper or Eshin Grey in terms of its actual colour on its own over the top of this grey here. If it was over the top of Wraithbone it would be even warmer than what we're doing here and you could really really see just kind of how grey it is. Whereas over the top of the grey here it actually looks darker because it's just kind of the way grey here works. And gives the illusion of being darker when it's actually just colder. So whilst our Black Templar guy is drying, he's over here. I'm not going to show you just yet because I don't want to pollute your minds just yet. But what we are going to do is we're going to now, as mentioned, do the Black Legion. And this is exactly the same. We're just going to start applying this over the top of all the armor. And as you can see already, it's a lot darker. Now, when Black Legion is kind of thinned down a bit, it also has a gray property, but it's got more of a brown in it, which makes it kind of feel a little bit dirtier which 
tends to make it feel a lot darker. And when applying it like this, it's not thinned at all here. As you can tell, I'm coming straight from the pot. It's got that kind of, from the new contrast range, that's got kind of that more single pigment style of paint application. So it's just very, very flat black. It's not trying to kind of leave us with a highlight or anything like that, which is where it kind of, it, if you're kind of don't really want to do loads of highlighting, Black Legion can be the wrong paint for you. But if you are intending to do highlighting, then maybe this is quicker and easier. So here we have it then. Black Templar and Black Legion, both on their own. This is what they look like. So as we can see, looking at our Black Templar one. This one is fully dry. The Black Legion one isn't quite dry yet, but this is our Black Templar one. As you can see, it's, well, it's a version of black, but it's actually a dark gray. It's kind of, as mentioned, kind of more akin to something like a Mechanica Standard Gray or even darker, something like Eshin Gray or Dawn Re Dark Reaper, not Dawnstone. Dawnstone's quite bright gray. And as you can see, it's definitely a gray. It's not quite black like a proper black armor as also as we kind of generally tend to see black armor used in warhammer models so this is our black templar however what it has done is it's done a really good job of contrast painting so you see we've got much darker paint here in the recess and we've got a bit of edge highlighting going on around here and well if you've checked out my how to paint contrast paints properly video We've got nice smooth panels here by painting it in the way that I usually like to paint such things. So this isn't acting a lot more like a contrast paint. However, is it a black armoured miniature? I don't really think so. There's the shield as you can see. So, contrasting that <laughs> with the Black Legion. This is very clearly a black paint. So it's a lot kind of darker all over. It's more consistent all over. It's not gray, but there is that element of brown. And it's not very well represented on the camera, but it has got kind of a little bit of a very, very dark brown tinge to it. But what you haven't really got is too much in the way of that contrast paint effect. We haven't got those deep dark recesses, for example, here in the helmet grill, and we haven't got any of those edge highlights or at least we've kind of got a sort of highlighting effect going on here, but it's not particularly impactful, not like, for example, around here on the top of the shield. So there you go. That's Black Templar versus Black Legion on its own. But what can we do to fix both the inherent issues with painting kind of more of a games workshop black? Well, this one needs a little bit more darkness and it needs a lot of highlighting. And this one needs a lot more black involved. So. We're gonna leave these two as our reference as they are over here just for now. We will come back to fixing them a bit later on. However, what we are gonna do is move on to our next pile of recipes in terms of things that we can do to get a much darker black. Now we're gonna go through the Black Templar ones first, and then we're gonna go through the Black Legion ones. Simple as that. So our first Black Templar style recipe is going to be actually be kind of more of an industrial heavy black. And this kind of gives us a bit of a metallic tang to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by covering all of the armor over with Iron Warriors. We want a nice sort of kind of dark heavy silver to do this. You could use something like Lead Belcher or even Iron Hand Steel, but those are a little bit too bright to get the effect that we're going to be after. Whereas Iron Warriors has got this kind of really nice kind of 
heavy industrial feel to it already. It's the darkest metallic that Games Workshop makes in terms of silver. Silver is the best for this, I've found. You can, of course, use Black Templar over the top of some of the really dark bronzes, but at a certain point, it's kind of like diminishing returns. You don't really get much of that metallic um, kind of finish if you use it over something that is too dark. But if you wanted to test it, you could do Black Templar over the top of something like Castellax Bronze or even the really dark one, which name escapes me at this moment. It'll come to me in just a moment. I'm certain of it. Looking at my paint rack. I mean, Balthazar Gold is pretty dark. Nope, can't remember. It'll come to me. I'm certain it'll come to me. But for now, what we're doing is we're just getting, as mentioned, the Iron Warriors all over all of our armor panels. Now the advantage to doing something this way, particularly on something like Chaos Warrior, is that you could just do all of the metallics as well. So you could do, you know, all of the chain mail and things. But we're not focusing on that right now. We're focusing on black armor, of course. So we're just getting this all over all of our armor panels. Once that's done, we shall re return. So with that Iron Warriors all applied, what we then do is we take the Black Templar and we apply this over the top. As you can see, it's already darker than when we did it over the Grey Seer. But it's not truly 100% dark, but that's okay. That's kind of what we want. So, directly comparing our Black Templar progress so far, here we have our Black Templar on its own miniature, and here we have Black Templar over the top of Iron Warriors. Now, as you can see, it is already a lot darker, but secondary to that, you've also got this faint little kind of gloss finish over, well, underneath the Black Templar over here, and that's because of the transparency of it, we're being able to see the Iron Warriors shining through. Now, if you had a brighter silver on there, this would be more pronounced as a color. But as you can see, there's just that little bit of faint of metallicness to it. And you can see around the edges, you can still see the silver just poking through. So this is still doing the contrast effect, even over a much darker color, much similar to this one. But there you go, that's the difference already, just by doing it over a darker color. So I promised that we would finish off each of these recipes. So to finish this one off, we're then gonna highlight it with a silver. And the color we're gonna to use to do that is Iron Hand Steel. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some of this on our brush and we're just gonna start picking out the edges. Now, if you wanted this to be kind of less pronounced, you would just go back over doing a highlight with Iron Warriors. However, we want this to be quite clearly a metallic scheme. So that's why I'm going for Iron Hand Steel. So with that Iron Hand Steel highlight applied, as you can see, we got this really interesting looking black. So that's one of our recipes done. It really accentuates the black by adding that kind of brighter highlight. So what we're gonna do now is gonna move on to the next one. And this is one of the most common things that you see from Games Workshop, it's this clean black. It's like a kind of shiny 
dark black that they do, which isn't metallic. Now, the way to determine this is when you're looking at box art, for example, on something like the Raven Guard, uh, you get this kind of this, this bluish tint to the armor. And that's achieved by doing some blue highlights with black as the main color. But with contrast paint, what we can do is we can start the blue tinting sooner rather than later. And one of the colors I like to use for this is Leviathan Blue because it's really, really nice, cold, dark blue that goes over the top of the, the, the model first. And then we apply the Black Templar afterwards. So we're gonna do that now. I'm gonna take this Leviathan Blue on our brush and we're just gonna pick a place to start again. Just gonna go down here on the knee. And we're gonna apply this all over. Now your choice of blue will indicate kind of what sort of style of black you're going for. In the most traditional one from Games Workshop is to kind of do sort of like a dark reaper highlight over the top of Abaddon Black or Chaos Black. And then to highlight that up with the blue greys, like Rust Grey and Fenrisian Grey. When we're doing it like this, we don't need to do the Dark Reaper first, because the Leviathan Blue is gonna provide that. And then Black Templar, as we've already seen a couple of times now, is very good at kind of doing the contrast thing. However, if you want it to be a slightly brighter blue, you absolutely can do that. Ultramarines Blue works here. We've done that before on the channel. I really do find that Leviathan is my favorite for this style. As it's already very dark. And as we've seen from our Iron Warriors one, the black we're going to get from this is going to be very, very dark, which is exactly what we're after. So with that Leviathan blue all applied, as you can see, it's a really pleasing color. And I really like this color, <laughs> it's fantastic. But we are making it black, so we're going to be taking that black temple now. And we're going to be applying this over the top. And just as you've seen already, we're going to get this bluish, tinted black. It's very dark. And the beauty of this is because Leviathan Blue is so black, well, dark, you don't need tons of Black Templar to do this. You can actually move quite quickly here, just taking small amounts from the pot and then just applying it. Just like that. So here we have all three of our black recipes so far. This is our Black Templar one. This is our Iron Warriors plus Black Templar. And here, of course, is the one we're working on at the moment, Leviathan Blue plus Black Templar. Now, when we compare these together, the metallic one and the blue one, as you can see, there's a very stark difference is much kind of more heavy and gray and sort of, well it's a, an industrial metal style whereas this one is a lot cleaner at the moment and it's a lot darker but we still have those hints of blue in there now if we compare the Leviathan blue to the black templar one on its own as you can see one is considerably darker than the other thus reinforcing the point, <laughs> the Black Templar is quite a see-through paint. So this is still kind of very grey seary. And this is very much kind of being punched up with the blue underneath. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight this guy and the color we're gonna be using just to reinforce that blue tone is rust grey. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a small amount of this on our brush and we're just gonna start picking out all of the edges.
this, not this. And so with that rust gray applied all over those edges, what we then do to finish it off is we take some fen resin gray and we do something called a spot highlight. And what we mean by that is we're just gonna add some little light spots. So we're just gonna pick out the sharpest points on the model. So this generally includes things like the corners, any tiny little rivets and things, just to really make them stand out. So here we have it as our comparison side by side. Once again, we have Black Templar on its own, Black Templar over Iron Warriors, and Black Templar over Leviathan Blue. These two have been highlighted, this one has not. So, overall, it looks pretty cool, right? This kind of feels a bit more closer to what Games Workshop usually does with its kind of clean black armor. And you could shade this down a little bit more if you wanted to, but honestly, that there, looks fantastic it's nice and dark and got that lovely blue-esque shine to it so we're going to move on to our next recipe now which is going to be a cold black and this is whenever you look at sort of a games workshop product or miniature that has kind of sort of just gray highlights this kind of just like more generally tends to be on things like armor or leather or you know just kind of cloaks and things so what we're going to do here is, like before, we're going to do a little pre-shade. And the color we're going to be using for this is Basilicanum Grey. Now you could use a brown if you wanted to here, but this is an absolute classic here from me using the Basilicanum Grey first because it's going to make our Black Templar, when we apply it, super dark. So we're just going to, as we've done so far, get this Basilicanum Grey all over all of this guy's armor. And then naturally we're gonna compare them all together. And you can see what I mean. And because Basilicarum Gray is just so dark, it's gonna look very different to our Black Templar only model. So there we have it, that's the Basilicanum Grey all applied. Now as you can see, they have a very similar kind of brightness to them, and they are two different types of greys, because this is just our Black Templar on its own one. But, as you are now about to see, adding the Black Templar over the top of the Basilicanum Grey is gonna make a really lovely dark black. So we're just gonna load up our brush with the Black Templar, and we're gonna start applying this all over. Just like that. And the effect should be immediate. So once the Black Templar has been applied over the top of the Basilicanum Grey, as you can see, we've got a lovely dark black going on here. Again, comparing it to our Black Templar only miniature. Now if we throw our blue miniature in and we put them next to one another in terms of Basilicanum Grey and Leviathan Blue, you can see we've got two very different kind of tombras or tones of black here. 
you see it really there on the shield, on the kind of crest of the top of the shield, just there. And it looks very, very effective. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add those highlights just like we did on the blue one. Only this time what we're going to do is we're going to use some thin down Dawnstone. And it's much the same thing. We're just going to take a small amount of this on our brush. And then we're going to pick a place to start. I'm just going to start just here. And so with that Dawnstone all applied, just like we did on the blue, what we're going to do, just to kind of give it that little bit of a spot highlight, we're going to take some Administratum Grey, and we're going to pick out the sharpest points. Across all of the armor. So here we have it then, here's four of our Black Templar recipes. We've got, I keep reminding you, but we've got the Black Templar on its own here, on the far right. We've got Iron Warriors plus Black Templar and highlighted with Iron Hand Steel there, the one that's wiggling. Then we have Leviathan Blue, Black Templar, Rust Grey and Fenrisian Grey on this one. And this is one we've just done, which is the Basilicanum Grey, Black Templar, Dawnstone and Administratum Grey. As you can see, all four of these are very different. <laughs> Black Templar is such a magic paint. Now, I'm sure you're getting the hang of this so far. It is a case of picking a pre-shade color, then using Black Templar to make it a very dark version of that color, and then highlighting it up with appropriate highlights based in that color palette. So with that in mind, we're gonna do the last one that I kind of see more consistently from Games Workshop, because there is a number of them that they do. So for occasionally there'll be ones that have like kind of a, a turquoisey edge, for example. But this one is one of the more common ones that is gonna come up now. So this is what we've seen before. I've done this before. Uh, this is going to be shyish purple with some purple highlights followed by black templar over the top. Well, no, shyish purple, then black templar, then the purple highlights, of course. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to load up my brush with Shayish Purple and I'm going to start painting this over the top of all of his armor, just as we've already done. Now, it seems like a bit of a weird one, but occasionally what you'll see when you look at some of Games Workshop's models is, particularly on the baddies, they'll have a not quite cold black on some of their details and what I mean by that is this purple recipe so if you look at some of things like chaos space marines and stuff like that you'll see that it's kind of got this it's it's like borderline if the blue is the really warm one and the gray is the coldest one this kind of sits in between the two. But as mentioned, you can do this style of black for any color in the contrast range. Some are more effective than others. So the darker ones like this are very, very good for this kind of style of painting with Black Templar. The ones that don't work so well are the really bright ones. So you're not gonna get a really light <laughs> whitish black if you put black templar over the top of apothecary white and you're not going to get a particularly dark black either same if you were to do it over the top of something like skeleton horde or gilliman flesh or fire slayer flesh or dark oath flesh but you could do this over you could use this kind of style of painting over something like psych or brown uh, flesh terror's red blood angels red in a pinch um, I've probably already mentioned it when we did the blue one, but Ultramarine's blue does work. It's just a lot kind of, it's got quite a more impactful bluish shade. But ultimately, I think you can get away with painting almost every Games Workshop miniature 
so far that has black armor or a large amount of black details that is that kind of really dark black, not that kind of really dark gray that we've got on the just pure black Templar. And I think you can paint pretty much any Games Workshop miniature using these three main ones, or indeed four main ones, the metallic, the blue, and the gray. And finally, this purplish one. So I'm just being a bit careful around the details. Shyish purple is one of those paints that can get away from you if you're just not careful. That's why I'm just being a bit slower with this one than I have been with the others. And so with that Shyish purple applied to all of the armor, what we're then going to do is take the Black Templar and we're going to apply this over the top. Now again, just like with Leviathan Blue, because it's so dark, you don't need loads of Black Templar here to get it looking black. So you don't want to overwhelm the model because you'll lose all of that purple if you do. So just go back to the pot little and often. So once again, comparing our Shaiish Purple and Black Templar to our Black Templar on its own, you can see this is a hell of a lot darker. In fact, it's more akin to something like the blue one. However, it's even darker than that. And that's because Shaiish Purple just looks darker to your eye uh, than the blue does. And well, this one's been highlighted, of course. But as you can see, there's a very subtle purple outline just here along the shield but it's there and it makes for a really really impressive kind of almost sinister dark black and that's what I generally like to call this is kind of like an evil black or like a sinister black type thing so what we're going to do is we're going to add the highlights now and the first one is going to be some demonette hide got it there and we're just going to start as always picking out all of the edges with the demon at hide. So with that demonette hide applied, we then take some slanesh gray. And much like we've done already, quite a few times now, we're gonna add this as a little spot highlight on those corners. And so there we have it. Our purple black armor is now finished. Now, when we compare all five of these side by side, you can see we've got five very different black recipes going on. Now there are some that are a little bit similar, i.e. the Iron Hand Steel and the Basilicanum Gray one. That's not Iron Hand Steel, it's Iron Warriors. I keep doing that, but it's Iron Hand Steel highlights. So these kind of look similar in a way until you look at the shields and you see that there is a very big difference there between the two. Now, Black Templar on its own is obviously the weakest one here. It's not very black at all. It is very much a dark gray. And having those separate kind of pre-shaded layers on before we put the Black Templar on gives you just makes such a difference to the paint and then it gives you lots of opportunities to do some really cool stuff and as mentioned earlier in the purple one 
well, you can always do something like a Flesh Terrace Red and then do Black Templar over the top. You could do Cygor Brown, you could do Dark Angels Green, you could do anything. But as mentioned before, I think these four here are pretty much the ones that you can use to paint any Games Workshop miniature that has black armor or large amounts of black details. Excluding things like leather. For leather, you'd want to do a sort of brownish finish. But there you go. That's the Black Templar section. So now it is time to work on Black Legion. And I think it's important here to check out our Black Legion painted miniature once again, next to our Black Templar painted miniature. And to also check it out alongside our other ones that we've done. So here's our metallic one. As you can see, still very, very dark. We have our gray one here. Like that. We have our purple one. As you can see. And then finally, blue one when we compare them side by side. Now what you'll have noticed throughout all of these, all five of these Black Templar ones, is there's a lot more depth than there is on the Black Legion one. The Black Legion one feels very, very flat. And that's okay because we could highlight that up to make that look better. Um, but we wouldn't really necessarily have the depth that we maybe get from these style of painting with the Black Templar. However, there is ways to give Black Legion schemes their depth and that is exactly what we're going to cover coming up next. So kicking things off then, we are going to go for that bluish black once again here because it's kind of the most consistent one that you see from Games Workshop and we're going to be using this on the unit champion. But what we are going to do first, rather than do a blue, we are actually just going to go straight in with Black Legion. And as you know, you've already seen it, Black Legion is just so dark. So we, that's where we're getting our kind of dark black colour from, is from the paint itself straight out the pot. We already know how effective it is because I've been showing it off. We will, exactly the same as the Black Templar stuff, be comparing and contrasting every step of the way as, again. So what you want to do is you just want to get Black Legion all over this model. And then we'll come back. So as you can see, we have our two Black Legion Chaos Warriors here. Now, what we're gonna do is, as mentioned, we're gonna do that bluish sheen over here, but we're not gonna be using a contrast paint for that. No, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use one of the new reformulated shades, and that is going to be Drakenhof Nightshade. And we're just gonna apply this all over all of the armor, just like this. Now it's gonna be very subtle. It's gonna be a lot subtler than the Black Templar version of things. What you're going to see when we come back is there is a marked difference between the non-shaded version and the shaded version. So with that Drakenhof Nightshade applied, you should be able to see a marked difference between the two different blacks. You see one has got a lot more kind of depth. It's also got a little bit of a sheen to it, which is exactly what we're after here and it just looks absolutely fantastic. Now there's not too much of a hint of blue in there, which is why it's like, if you're after that, that sort, of, sort of very bluish finish, it's not the best West Repeat for doing this type of thing because, you know, Drakenhof Nightshade, Nuln Oil, any of the shades over the top will change the color ever so slightly, but it's not enough for it to be kind of a feature part of the models. But as you can see, this being our plain Black Legion model and this being our shaded one, 
there is a huge difference between the two. A lot more depth, as mentioned. For fans of the finish of Chaos Black Spray, this is what you want to do. It looks fantastic. However, whilst it is still drying in some of the deepest recesses, it's dry enough for us to begin the highlighting stage. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some Dark Reaper and we're going to use this to highlight our armor. Now, because it's so much darker than our Black Templar one, we can go a lot darker with the black. Can make it even more menacing by using Dark Reaper, Eshin Grey, those types of colors. So we're just gonna pick out all the edges here. And then once that's done, we shall come back. So with that Dark Reaper all applied, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some thin stone Rust Grey. I'm gonna use this as our spot highlight. We're just gonna be picking out those corners, much like we've done already. So there we have it with that rust gray spot highlight applied. As you can see, the black is taken. Well, it's finished. And again, we're comparing it with our non shaded and highlighted version. And you can see there is a massive difference between plain Black Legion and Black Legion with some highlights. However, what we're also going to do is we're going to compare this with our other blue, which is this one here. Now, as you can see, again, complete difference. One is a lot darker. One is a lot brighter and cleaner. One has got a little bit more gloss, a little bit more kind of sinisterness, and that's this one over this one. But they're both very legitimate black uh, kind of recipes. I think they both look fantastic. My preference, though, very much is Black Legion these days. <laughs> I don't know if you've been able to tell from the following, from the most recent videos. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our next one. And we're going to do a kind of dark grey one, just like we did with the Dawnstone uh, and the uh, Administrator Grey and Null. But this one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to do some Black Legion first, and then we're going to apply some Null Oil all over the top of it, and you can see the difference. And then after that, I've got two more fun ones for you to follow along for. So, I'm going to grab that Black Legion, I'm just going to start applying this all over the top of the armour. So there we have it, here's our Black Legionified model. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shade it with Nulled Oil. Now, there's not gonna be too much difference between this and our Drakenhof Nightshade one. However, what you are gonna see is it's just gonna be that little bit darker. It's kind of black by fractions at this point uh, when we're doing this. However, I think this is probably my favorite recipe of the lot because it's just so simple and you can go up with any color from here because you just get this really lovely kind of very dark flat black oh lovely recessing you can already see it happening right So with that Null Oil applied, as you can see, we have once again got a very, very dark, very lovely black armor going on here. And there is a just a touch difference between that and the blue. The blue feels a little bit, little bit warmer than the black with the Null Oil does. But it's kind of, as mentioned before, kind of fractions of improvement here. So looking pretty good. Just to compare the shields, as per usual, you can see it a little bit better there on the tops, for example. It's just that little bit bit blacker. Looking awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to highlight it up. And the colour we're going to be using to do that first is Eshin Grey.
So with that Eshin Grey applied all over, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Dawnstone. I'm going to use this as our spot highlight. Just picking out the corners. And the rivets. So with that Dawnstone all applied, as you can see, our second of our Black Legion recipes is now finished. And when comparing them alongside each other with the blue and the black, you can see there is a difference. It's not hugely noticeable, but there is a difference. You can tell just kind of how much kind of darker our Null Oil one is to this one. It's kind of got, definitely got that sort of bluish sheen on the shields you can see, see it on the on the armor as well and if we were then to compare with our black templar version there we go as you can see again it's just got that kind of much darker feel to it when comparing them side by side Lastly, we'll compare with our Black Legion on its own. So you can see huge differences all around. So what we're going to do is going to move on to our last two. Now we're going to do the Black Legion at the same time here. because The last two are some fun recipes that we've got. As you can see, the Dawnstone and the Drakenhof Nightshade one, they're very, very similar. It's just kind of very kind of fractionally different in terms of the tone. Now you could use Agrax Earthshade to do the shading option. You could use Caraberg Crimson. You could use Druki Violet. You could use any of the shades to add that kind of slightly darker tone and to kind of get that kind of contrasting effect within the deepest recesses, unlike Black Legion on its own. Just compare them, all three of them side by side like that. You can see that there is a difference, quite a strong difference between the two. There's almost like an absence of depth on the Black Legion one of its own. But you could use any shade to do this, and of course you could use the purple highlights for a Druki Violet, you could use some red highlights. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some pretty fun ones now that are just kind of very different. So we're gonna be doing a like a fiery red black, and we're gonna be doing a foresty green. So Hold on to your hats because it's going to be awesome. But what we're going to do is we're going to apply Black Legion over all of the armor on both of these guys, and then we shall come back. So with that Black Legion applied to both of these, now what we're going to do is we're going to work on our red black. So the color we're going to be using is Fire Dragon Bright. Now it's going to look weird, but don't worry. It's going to look cool. <laughs> and so what we're going to do here is we're just going to pick out all of the edges with the fire dragon bright now you could use this for example to make some like really cool like some mark of corn guys Or indeed, you could use this to kind of achieve some sort of object source lighting style thing. Just on small sections. Your monitors, um, monitors, miniatures. I was gonna say models. So with that fire dragon bright all applied, as you can see, like I said, it was going to look a little bit weird, but what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red and we're going to apply this over the top of the armor and the edges.
you don't need tons of flesh terrors red here you just want to go back to the pot little and often and so with that done he's looking pretty cool however what we're going to do is just to take the edge off it just slightly we're going to take some non oil and we're just going to apply this over the flats of the panels So with that done, you have this gorgeous dark red. So it's kind of almost like the fire is just peeking out from around the edges. It looks fantastic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop them to one side and now we're gonna work on our green one. And the color we're gonna be using to highlight him is Nurgling Green. So we're just gonna take some of that on our brush. And for the last time, We're going to start highlighting. Now this will be perfect for doing Mark of Nurgle stuff. And so with that Nurgling green applied all over, he looks pretty cool. However, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use some Dark Angels green. And just like with the Flesh Terrors, we're gonna apply this all over the top of the armor and the highlights. And we're just gonna go back to the pot little and often. So with that Dark Angels green applied, as you can see, we've got this really subtle green edge highlighting towards the edge, but it's a little too subtle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Strachan green. I'm gonna use this as our spot highlight, but it's been slightly bigger than a spot highlight. So rather than just doing the corners, we're gonna do the corners plus a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna find a corner like that, and then just bring it out just a little bit. Just like that. So here we have it then, all of our Black Legion schemes together in one place. Boy, do they look fantastic. I really like these. So we did our little bit of extra Strack and Green highlighting there to the green one, just to kind of give it that little bit of pop. So there's our final bit. And as we've done quite often throughout this video, we're gonna compare it to our just plain Black Legion one, just here, as you can see. So there is that bit of depth in there provided to us by the Dark Angels green. And we've got those lovely little kind of just subtle green highlights at the edge. You can really tell it a difference again by looking at the shields there like that. If we compare our red, as you can see, the red is a lot more pronounced than the green. But that's because Dark Angel's green is just that bit darker. But it still looks absolutely fantastic. And again, if we compare our blue and our gray one, there you go, you can see there is a very clear difference between all three. So, there we go, that's all of the Black Legion. 
And that's all of our black schemes, all together, all done, at last. Absolutely fantastic. So I couldn't let you go without one final comparison. Between all of our models here, we have our Black Templar and our Black Legion 1 on their own. These are just the plain schemes with nothing else done to them. And you can absolutely see under these photography lights the clear differences between the two. Next up we have both of our blue schemes. The first one there is our Black Legion 1 and this one coming into view right now is our Black Templar 1 over the top of the Leviathan blue. Again. Big differences, absolutely fantastic looking regardless though. God, I love that Black Legion 1 shield just there. Next up, we have both of our grey ones. Now this one was the one we're done with Basilicanum grey, uh, followed by the Black Templar. And the second one coming into view in just a second is our Black Legion 1 shaded with the Nulm oil. <laughs> I think that's my favourite. Next up we have our Shaiish Purple and Black Templar one just there and then we have our red one. It's very easy to pick that one out of a lineup as you can see. It's very 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 red. I think it looks fantastic for corn. I think the purple one looks great for Slanesh as well. Then we have our Nurgle or our green one just there moving out of the line of sight. And finally we have our metallic one, the Iron Warriors with Black Templar over the top. All in all, 10 different schemes and they all look pretty fantastic to me. So there we have it. The ultimate black armor contrast plus video is now done as you can see. This has been a fantastic project and I hope that you find it as a great reference and a great resource for all of your black armor painting needs. And I hope you enjoyed this one and you found some useful tips in there. And I can't wait to see what other black armor schemes you might come up with using the same techniques and principles as discovered in this video. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.